seasonal snow can cover up to a third of the Earth's landmass. More than half of this is habitable land, where people rely on their cars as their main mode of transport. So, with these conditions only being available almost exclusively to the Northern Hemisphere, and for a limited time, we've set off to find out how car manufacturers can now test the safety of their vehicles in such extreme conditions all year round. It's a cold, damp March morning, and already the traffic's building up on the motorway. So it's been an early start this morning. We were on the road uh, while it was still dark, to be honest. And we're heading over to Finland. And apparently when we get there, it's going to be pretty cold, minus two to minus 10 at night. This time of year, temperatures are somewhat on the mild side for outdoor testing. This isn't great news for the car manufacturers who use the facilities to conduct cold weather testing pushing mechanical and electrical components to extremes, trying to find any weaknesses. Nearly at Heathrow now, raring to go to get over to Finland and, uh, and see what the cold weather has in store for us. After a pretty smooth journey in on the motorway, we got the bags through check-in and security and we're on our way to the gate. Oh, the excitement's building now. We're just coming up to gate one. We've literally got a couple of hours on this flight here over to Helsinki. A little bit of a wait there for a connecting flight and then we jump onto a smaller plane straight up to Ivalo in the very north of Finland inside the Arctic Circle and that's where we'll get ready to go out to uh, have a good look at this new test centre at Test World Finland. Once I got settled into my seat, I got straight onto the flight entertainment systems and loved the external cameras and new technologies that the airline were providing. The great news was that it was a pretty clear day, so we got some fantastic views of Scandinavia and Finland. We got a great idea of the cold climate as we approached Helsinki, and after a short stop, we boarded a smaller plane and flew onto Ivalo, 300 kilometers inside the Arctic Circle. And on landing, we really saw some snowy conditions. Well, we're outside uh, the airport now. We've managed to get through with all the bags and all the kit, and we're off. We're uh, here in Ivalo. It is pretty cold, uh, not as cold as we thought it was going to be. I'm out uh, just above freezing at the moment, and it's going dark, so it'll get colder apparently. Uh, but a bit of a warm spell for them and uh, we'll get in the bus and uh, get up to the track itself and see what's going on. When you land, you actually get a real understanding about how deep the snow is here. Four or five feet either side of the road. We're flying along at 50 miles an hour. It's been beautifully ploughed. There's no snow on the road at the moment. Uh, and it's going to be really interesting to find out why the engineers need an indoor test centre and why they need snow all year round when there's that much of it here already. In spite of all our research and preparation, the scenery and the Arctic conditions completely blew me away. Next stop in sight to see the fantastic new facility. And on my way in, I found a dramatic door to open. Well, we're here in Test World in Finland with Alex Burns, who is the president of Millbrook, which is the parent company of Test World. What a fantastic facility. Tell us all about it. So this is all about providing an environment in which tyre manufacturers and vehicle manufacturers can test their products in winter conditions right through the European summer. So we're walking now on snow that fell quite recently here in Finnish Lapland that our team have brought into this large, very cold track. We control the temperature of the ground underneath the snow, we control the air above it, and basically we maintain this snow base right through the year so that people can drive on natural snow any day of the year 
in Finnish Lapland rather than having to go to the southern hemisphere to do it. I mean, how does a facility like this actually help in that? So a facility like this is a super efficient way to test tyres. There are no delays for the weather because we control the weather here and we provide workshops for the tyre for the manufacturers, the vehicle manufacturers, so they can work on their product or changing their tyres right next to the test platform. And we also offer test services here which is also extremely efficient so that people can just send us uh, dozens, hundreds sometimes of tyres, we will do the testing for them and send them the test results. So that saves them the money. They don't have to fly up here to northern Lapland in order to come and do the tests themselves. We'll do it with our local test engineers and technicians. Fantastic. So in terms of engineering, how difficult was it to build this venue? This is, I mean, this is really a world first. So we were the pioneers in the technology to do this. It's pretty difficult because we have a lot of temperature to control here. The, the floor underneath the snow is temperature controlled. That has to be cooled in the summer to keep the snow frozen. And it actually has to be heated in the winter to render getting too cold when it might be minus 40 degrees centigrade outside. So what next then? What's next for the facility? Our next big challenge is actually in the other facility next door is can we recreate black ice conditions for the industry? That's really a tough condition for a tyre, it's really a tough condition for a car and if we can reproduce those reliably and repeatably that would be a super asset for the industry. Alex wanted us to really see what this testing was all about. A car was found so we could have a go for ourselves. 400 metres of brand new road surface an electric car with lots of torque and water sprayed everywhere. What could possibly go wrong? So we're here with Marcus, uh, Marcus Hilly, who's the test manager here at Test World, in the sort of the asphalt uh, track here. And what exactly is this for and what are we going to be doing today? This is for uh, so-called summer tests for tyres and vehicles. So we have uh, some dry asphalt and some wet asphalt. And we can perform uh, wet grip tests and dry grip tests. And, and the, the asphalt itself is not just any asphalt, this is asphalt that's been specifically created to sort of up to a special standard, isn't it? Yes, it's, uh, it's now fulfilling the R117 uh, regulation for tyre type approvals. And so that's so that, that people know their tyres have been tested on exactly the right sort of surface and it means they work on, you know, on the environment that will use them on the roads in the end. Definitely. We are a test laboratory, so we know how to follow the standards. OK, so, so what exactly do you do when we test the tyres then? Can we, can we actually take a run and see how that works? Sure. Shall we go now? That'd be fantastic, yeah. Oh, OK, great. The test here was to get up to a set speed and then hit the brakes as hard as you can in exactly the same place every time. Now we break. So that was 27.33 meters. Is that good? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Let's do that. I wasn't expecting quite to stop that suddenly, but, um, but presumably it's a break test, so of course we will. As Marcus continued to test the car on the track, it became clear that manufacturers need facilities like this to develop safer tyres and brakes for vehicles. To the manufacturers of tyres and the car companies themselves, this is a real, it's in a really important venue, isn't it? Yes, this, this gives benefit from test accuracy and repeatability point of view, but also the efficiency. You don't need to worry about the weather forecast for tomorrow or next week. This works like a factory. All of this astonishing engineering really does make a difference in the real world. The cars that we drive every day are safer and more reliable because of the testing done by engineers at facilities like this. However, there's much more to test well Finland than brake tests on asphalt or on the indoor snow track. It was time to head back outside and have a drive on one of the many snow-covered test tracks that are usable five to six months of the year. Well, we're here with Arno Mackie in a car which has got winter tyres on, but they're not studded and we are literally driving faster than I would drive on a wet road. So how how is the car managing to stick to the road? I mean, first of all, explain what this track's about, Erno. Yeah, we are now driving a snow handling. Uh, it's, uh, it's all natural snow here outside. I mean, in, in England, if we had this amount of snow on a road, the cars wouldn't be able to drive at all. Nobody has snow tyres. 
Um, it, it doesn't snow enough. We might get two, three, four days a year with snow on the roads like this, but it just doesn't make it worthwhile to have snow tires. So people generally, once it gets this much snow, we're stuck, we can't move. And the whole road's just gridlock and everybody's there for hours and hours until the snow clears, you know. So it's a real kind of a, a different way of like, A, thinking and B, being in a car, just experiencing driving at 40, 50, 60 kilometers an hour with snow piled up either side two, three feet high and, and the car just feels like it's driving brilliantly. But I believe that the most important thing is to know the different conditions and what speed you can drive and what kind of tires you have. It was remarkable how well the car handled in some pretty hostile conditions. And although the instructor's driving skills were really clear to see, to prove that it wasn't all about the driver, he pulled over and told me that I needed to have a go. Right, well, let's, uh, let's, let's do it then. This will be exciting. Can't quite believe it, but yeah, let's have a go. All right then, you better strap yourself in nice and tight for this. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh this is easy. Do you know what? Actually, it's, it's, it's a lot less slippy than I, I really thought it was going to be, he says as he comes to his first corner. It is so much different than driving without snow tyres. Um, it really is. We spent the rest of the afternoon driving around this amazing test track. I didn't crash, which is proof positive that car companies have really learned from the work done here and put some astonishing technology into the cars and into the tyres, helping to keep them on the road. The next morning we all got up early, packed up all our kit and headed out to the cars, where we discovered that there was rather a lot of ice around and a few people hoping I'd slip. We were making our way back to the new indoor asphalt track to have a chat with Managing Director of Test World, Yana, about his remarkable facility. Now it seems kind of a crazy thing, there's, there's snow and ice indoor next door, yeah. and then you've opened now an indoor asphalt track. Yes. Why does a customer need an indoor asphalt track? Actually you need to do these tests for all of those tyres, so now in the same location, year round, you can do those tests here. There's a lot of technique. It looks like just an ordinary hall, but it's not. It's full of technique and technology for today's and future needs. And we've heard a lot over the last uh, couple of days we've been here about how replicating the test over and over again is really important. Yes. And is that why a venue like this, where you can keep the, the weather and the climate identical over a period of time, is that important to the customers? That's very important. Also outdoor testing, it's important. But here in indoor test laboratory conditions, you definitely get good results in, in right temperature. Have you seen a, a big uptake since you opened in the last few days? Are the customers excited about what they've seen? Yes, they are very excited and uh, it was fantastic to see when uh, very uh, professional guys came to me and said, this is fantastic, we are going to use it, so. Absolutely. Well, Jana, thank you very much indeed for, for, for letting us talk to you and, and what a place. It's, uh, it truly is an amazing place just being able to keep the weather and everything controlled at an exact environment here on a road or on the ice track next door and all of the tracks outside. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, my pleasure. We'd had a fantastic time at Tesswell Finland and learned a huge amount about the facility, the indoor and outdoor tracks, driving in snow and tyre testing. The ability to test on real snow all year round and on a real road surface at any temperature, whatever the weather, will influence the development time and cost and make a difference to safety. Our cars are definitely safer and more reliable because engineers and technicians spend months and months here testing and retesting the next generation of vehicle and tyres. Harsh weather is perfect for discovering weak points in new cars. This way, drivers don't have to.